All right, let's take a look at a chart and some of the uh, little enhancements we can do within a chart, which are the borders, titles, and legends, which uh, add greatly to its usability. So we'll start Report Builder. And we're going to connect into the same data set we had, had before. So I'm going to come through here and I'm going to use the Chart Wizard this time. And we're going to go into this Mathena Group uh, 2012 data set that we uh, created here a few minutes ago. And I'll just go next. And a column, it doesn't matter what kind of chart I'm choosing in here because I just it, it's not the chart that I really want to focus on. So now we're going to take the sales amount and I'll drop that down on the values. And we'll take the uh, fiscal year and drop that on the series and the product category name for categories. Now, I'll, uh, Ocean's fine. Let's, uh, we'll, we'll go with Ocean this time. And I'm in here at finish. Let's uh, get rid of the uh, footer. Oops. Let's remove the footer. And let's expand this out some so we can see a little more. See our chart. And let's run it just to make sure it works. And here's our chart. <clears throat> now, you, you notice the border and the title and the legends as we come through here. And that's what we're going to work with. First off, we're going to work with the border. So if we come in here and select chart properties, I know that was a little bit off the screen, but that's what I want to look at. Let me move this onto the screen. So now we're down here on border and to make life easier, let me move this so you can see a little bit. I'm going to go in, I'm going to say I want a frame and you notice the frame border type has changed. I'm going to change the frame color to something uh, a little different just so you can see it there's hot pink and I'll change the internal line color to um, blue. Now those of you that are graphic artists you immediately identify that I have no concept of what I'm doing here in colors and, and you're correct that's really not what I want to do and we'll say okay and now you see we've got this hot pink with the blue insert and you can run it see so it same thing back over in design and here's your chart title and this is just a text box and what you want to do is put it some kind of a descriptive name that fits in your problem domain. That is, you know, whatever you going, to, your users are going to call the chart, then that's what you, you want it to do. Remember, we're going to save most of these charts as report parts. And a lot of times over in the report part gallery, which let me close so that it's cleaner, report part gallery, you'll see a little image and, and they'll spot the chart and the descriptive name and all that. And it makes it easier for them. So now we have descriptive name in there of the chart. And just run it again back over to design, always be flipping back and forth between this run and this design so that you don't have 17 changes at once. So now we'll go down here and we're down here and I'm going to right click here and I'm going to say horizontal axis properties. And now I can come in here and I can change the labels and uh, whatever I wanted to do down here. So enable auto fit, which is really pretty much the way you want to go. And I can, uh, let me hide the axis labels just to show you that. So now you see they're gone. All right. Oh, good grief. Just a second. All right, I got it back. <clears throat> Control Z works on this too. Let's go back in horizontal axis properties down here. And there's my labels. And I had hidden them in auto fit. I can change my fonts. Uh, and uh, again, you know, I, I keep beating this to death, but um, Georgia, wherever she is, yeah, yeah, Georgia, and eight point might be okay. Remember, on the web, Georgia seems to display better, so I can go in here and I can run it again. And now I've got this display. Let's go back over and look at this other axis over in here and I'll go into vertical axis properties and my labels exactly the same and my fonts exactly the same and numbers let's change the numbers down here to currencies we'll use a thousand separator now let's clear that out let's show values in thousands and we'll say okay and now let's run it so you see this is cleaner as you come on across like this and then you can go in and add other things but here's your border and your descriptive name and then you change these axes. So first thing you do is make sure you get 
the right property, the right display type you have. Back when we were in the course earlier and we looked at the, uh, w the different types of data that you want to present, make sure you pick one of the chart types that represent this and then you go through and start this cleanup. All right, and you'll end up with some, and then you'll save them as report parts. You end up with some charts that are, are fairly popular in there for the users. Let's go through and save this one now. First thing we're gonna we're gonna come through, and I'm gonna publish the report parts. And the default settings is fine with me. And matter of fact, I should have changed. Let me do that again. Publish report parts. Let's look at this. There's my uh, uh, shared data set. You see chart one. I don't like that, so I'm going to change the name of chart one in here to um, uh, shows orders. Just so I know what I was doing in there. And I'll publish it on out. And I'll close. And again, let's take a look at that. Let's go over to the uh, insert menu, report parts, and we'll search for all. And here's Sparkline, and there shows borders. And you see down here, you see this? If you didn't rename it, like Tablix 2, whatever the heck that is. But here's my uh, shows borders. Here's my Sparkline. So these names are very important. Again, it's very important also for the searches. And that's all there really is to uh, borders and titles and, um, you know, the axis, uh, the different display information down here in the axis. Remember, though, the more information that you put, more textual information that you need to put in the charts is just a sign that your chart is not communicating the information quickly. The idea of a chart is instant communication. If you have to come through and read all this stuff, then it's not working in there. And if you have, if the chart has too much information on it, you know, 35,000 different bars in here, etc., that's pretty much a waste of time. But you know that. And down the road we go.